Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com and our series in Ephesians chapter 6 on the whole armor of God. This study is titled, Girt About with Truth, from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13 and 14a. And we say 14a because we're going to focus in on what that phrase, girt about with truth, means, and then we'll pick up with the rest of verse 14 in our next study. And as you listen, you can send comments, questions, and prayer requests to bbbfohio at yahoo.com or send your letter to P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. Again, that email address is bbbfohio at yahoo.com. And the mailing address is P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. And now we begin our study titled, Girt About with Truth, in our Whole Armor of God series from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13 and 14a. This is part one of two. So let's open with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for uh, all who are here this morning, and we're thankful for this time that we can spend in your word. Just pray that uh, you help us as we settle in and get the ball rolling here in a new building. The church goes on. The ministry goes on. And uh, we just pray, Lord, that you'll bless our efforts as we seek to bring glory to the name of Jesus Christ. And as we teach this morning, that the Word of God would be lifted up above all things. As you yourself have said, you've lifted up thy Word above all thy name. And may we have that attitude about the Word of God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 A couple of things I want to do before we uh, get into our study, though. Um, I think I said it down here. Also, Brother Nick, I'd like you to come forward to you, give you this uh, little card as uh, congratulations for successfully graduating. Yeah. Desi, get a picture. Get a picture. Somebody get a picture. All these phones around. No one's taking a picture. Yeah, he's got my camo on. He came dressed for the, for the study. It's just a blank. <laughs> okay. God bless you. And uh, we do unboxing videos on Facebook sometimes for folks. And I just want to show you. We've got uh, a little letter from, uh, uh, you may remember Tim and Jean Duma from uh, Illinois. I won't give their city out. They don't need, people don't need to know the city. They sent me this a little gift and a little note, and uh, evidently, they want me to mm -hmm. hang myself. <laughs> That's got John 3.16 from the correct Bible. What I'm thinking is, uh, any, of you, any of you get married or die? Then, uh, there's a nice one there. So, so Tim and Jean, it's a tie, Martha, which is a noose. It's nothing but a decorative, a decorative glorified noose. How many of you know there's actually what these are, napkins? They originally were just to wipe your face with. The ironic thing is, is by the time I do, I'm done with my, wearing mine, it's covered with food. So. Yeah. <laughs> So, very nice and thank you. I, I'm sending him a thank you note. So. All right. So, let's get into our Bible study here. Ephesians 6, 13. And we're going to just start with the first part of verse 14. I'm just going to mention one of the ways I look at ties. It's, a, it's, the, way, it's the way to wear a t-shirt with your suit. <laughs> Decorative. You can put anything you want on the tie, and as long as you're wearing a suit, you still look fashionable. You still don't make me want to wear them, though. The whole armor of God. Gird about with truth. Now, this isn't about ties, but it's going to be something about what you wear. Amen? Ephesians 6, 13, 14. Let's go ahead and read, beginning with verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, 
that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Now just the first part of this, verse 14, read that. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. And that's where we're going to stop, right there. We'll get into the rest of it next week. Uh, but we're going to start with this uh, portion. I'll get to it in a minute. But that's where we're going to start with the whole armor of God. And I want to tell you, I've heard uh, preaching on this before, teaching on it. And uh, it can get really... Uh, uh, convoluted, but it can also, they can rush through it like they're in a hurry. You got a Bible over there? Yeah, thank you. I'll set one up here. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with the truth. Now I'm just going to be honest with you that the loins means what it, you think it means. So don't be uh, silly about it. We're all adults here. Wait a minute, before we get to him. We have to begin by first checking in with the translation consultant for the Message Bible. Oh, and uh, you'll see why when you, when you see this. This is why I say that. The mess is what I like to call it. Ephesians 6, 13 and 14. Be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get. Every weapon God has issued. So that when it's all over but the shouting, you'll still be on your feet. Now, doesn't that sound like what we just read? <laughs> that's the point. No, that's, for, that's serious. That's the Message Bible. So that when... Here, here, here's our response. <laughs> I love that. That's our standard response here. So that when it's all over but the shouting, you'll still be on your feet. Could you see the King James translators come up with something like that? Thank God for our King James Bible. Amen? Amen. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm going to have to move some of this stuff over. If you don't mind, Charlie. So, we'll take the whole Word of God. The problem with the New Bible versions is, in an effort to try to make you not have to work, they, that's their selling point. But it's not just that. You need to understand it's a corruption. It's not just... If, if the only problem was they were watering it down, it wouldn't be a big problem. But the problem is, is they actually are corrupting the Word of God. Amen. And we're told, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God. Amen. The whole armor of God. And so we're going to go line by line and what you need to do is take note of these things and you need to look at your own life and ask yourself, am I leaving an opening for the enemy? Because most of us, I think, are going to, if we look long and hard at this, we're going to see there's areas of improvement. Amen? Amen. Amen. How many of you have already arrived? Jenny? Nobody else? Only no, Jenny. <laughs> but you, but you, you, you joke. But there are people who email me all the time who claim that. But yeah, they claim to. I'm there. I'm, I don't sin. I said you just did, liar. Well, the old, uh, the new ones don't even teach what the old ones used to teach anymore. Anyway. And we begin by being warned. This is a warning. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. In other words, why do we see so many Christians falling today? It's like an elephant in a room you don't want to talk about, but you got to. The fact is, the church in America is dying. Now, the church of Jesus Christ will never die. And when the rapture happens, there will be believers go up. But the church in America, the real church of Jesus Christ, is shrinking. Yeah. And one of the reasons is because so many people come to Christ and they're saved. But they don't take the battle seriously. Yeah. And that's why when you walk into the Christian bookstore, go there sometime this week and look around. 
It's all a self-centered mess. It has very little to do with really being in the battle. And it's all about me, 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 and making me feel good about me. And positive messages for me. Things to make me feel good about myself as I stare with, at myself in the mirror. You know, that's what they, they ought to title most of these books. They don't, they don't take the battle seriously because they're not in the battle. Yeah, amen. You got to be in the battle. Right. Yeah. You remember in the, I want to tell you, honestly, in Vietnam, I don't, I don't hold a big grudge against what they call draft dodgers. In the Vietnam War, um, the so-called draft dodgers a lot of them really they knew too much because they knew that they that that war was a unconstitutional war because it wasn't being fought to one yeah, it, it was being it was political war and they were throwing men like uh, into a meat grinder yeah. Yeah. and there's a lot of people who didn't dodge the draft but they found ways of going into things where they wouldn't be thrown over there just to die and a lot of the good men that went over there, they, they were killed by our own stuff like Agent Orange. You know, yeah. all that stuff. It's just yeah. sad. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when there's a real war of defense going on and it's being fought properly in any country, yeah. in, in America, for example, then a draft dodger is considered a coward. And a draft dodger, that's not something you ought to want to be. And so if I were alive and it was uh, the war, like World War II, for example, you can talk about what got us into that war and this and that, but once it was done, it was done. And if we had not fought that war, this world would be in a mess right now. It would be horrible to live in this world right now. Well, there's a bigger war going on right now, and I'm not talking about the Muslims. There's a bigger war going on right now in this world, in the spirit world, and most Christians are AWOL. Most Christians are not involved in any battle. Amen. Their big battle was waking up and going through the day without cussing somebody because they get mad at them. That's their big battle. Yeah, that's right. Is that a battle? Yeah, that's a battle that some people have. They have a problem with their language or whatever. But there's a big picture. There's a big battle going on. Amen. And you're in it whether you like it or not. And you're one of the enemy's targets, whether you like it or not. Yep. You may want to sit it out, and that goes for the unsaved as well. The unsaved are in that battle whether they want to believe it or not. And you've got a target on you, and so you had better... It's like you've seen those guns where they got the laser sight, and in the movies every once in a while on TV or whatever, you'll see the, someone look and they'll see the laser. And they're like... And it goes there or right up here. And sometimes it's bad that, you know, sometimes there's somebody messing with them and they'll get scared. But that's what's going on with the unsaved. That's where the target is. And when they die, that kill shot hits, they go to hell. Yeah. And it, how many of you knew uh, Adam West, the original Batman, TV Batman, died? Yeah. And like I said, he was 88 or something like that. If he wasn't saved, none of that matters to him now. Yeah. And if he wasn't saved, he went through life ignoring the battle for his soul. Yeah. And I, I don't wish hell on anybody. I hope somehow, some way he was saved. Amen. But that's the reality. We're told to take the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. I think that Life. It doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. If you want to be a drag queen and your parents don't love you, you need new parents. If you want to be a drag queen and your friends don't love you, you need new friends. All right, boys and girls and everything in between, stop what you're doing because tonight we're with a fabulous citation. How are you? Super pumped. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk the runway and I'm gonna vote. We can't wait to see you vote. You know how you're turning out to be like a social media superstar right now? Kind of. I saw, I've seen a bunch of people want to interview me and a bunch of people writing articles about me. And because I went up on stage at the Worth the World tour because I was just in drag and everyone thought that was super cute. <laughs>
You know, they're just introducing that boy's parents who had him in drag performing eight, eight years old. You say, why are you showing me this? Because if you're not aware of this already, you need to wake up. Yeah. That's going on all over the world and all over America. Yeah. That is nothing new. People are on Facebook saying, oh, this is shocking. Well, what planet do you live on? I know. This, that started, I know it was going on in the 80s. And there were kids being encouraged to cross-dress and everything by their own parents. Of course, I've told the story. There were parents that gave their children marijuana and alcohol and everything when they were 14, 15, 16 years old, trying to, basically trying to destroy their own children. So with that, is anyone going to argue that we are not in the evil day? Yeah, yeah John? In, uh, in Canada, it just came out this last week, if your kid wants to be a drag queen, yeah. Are transgender and you don't love them, the Canadian government will come in and take them out of your home. Well, it's Ontario, it's not the whole Canadian government, but that's bad enough. That's and bad. what it'll, it'll spread like a cancer. Did you hear what he said? In, that, in, in Ontario, if you uh, do not, if your kid comes to you and says they want to be a crossdresser, they want to be transgender, they want to be a homo, and you say no, then they'll come and take your kid from you and put them in a home that'll allow them to do that. And, it, and this, this is the law. They made it law. Well, there's a kid on TV said if, you, if, your, kid, if your parents don't let you, you need new parents. Yeah. That's exactly what We've been saying for years they want the children. And all the, all the soft-headed evangelicals, man, for years have been saying, you're just, that's an extreme. They don't want the children. They just want to be left alone. <laughs> they don't want to be left alone. They want to be in your face. And I'm telling you, there's coming. We are we are already in the works of taking some precautions here because I guarantee you, there's going to come a day where they're going to demand to have a gay wedding, as they call it, in this building. Yep. And I'll, I'm going to fight it tooth and nail. But I want to tell you right now, just you need to understand, if they, if I have to, I'll do a gay wedding. And I've already told some of you were here when I showed you what it would be like. Hey, man. <laughs> I want to be here. They'll regret it. They'll regret it. But we'll have us a gay wedding. I'll tell them more than that. <laughs> Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. See, uh, uh, it's not that you have to become a crusader and start a big international movement and be on TV and all that sort of thing. The Bible doesn't ask a lot of us. God's not asking a lot of us. He's asking us to take a stand. We're taking a stand right here. You should take a stand in your own home. You should take a stand with your children. Oh, homeschooling is so much work. Get over it. It's better than throwing them into the pit of hell. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah, they, 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 like I said, they, they're in the schools. They want your children. So what do you do? You take the stand wherever you are. Your stand isn't going to be the same as mine. But wherever you are, you should take that stand. It's a little reality check. There comes a time when all that is left for you to do is to what? Stand. There's a time where that's all you can do. And uh, the question I want to ask before we move on is, are you willing to serve in God's standing army? Amen. You like that? Amen. I came up with that all by myself. <laughs> Soldiers in God's standing army, as you read through the Bible. Abel. All Abel was doing was offering the blood sacrifice that his daddy taught him to offer. Amen. And it got him killed. Abel wasn't preaching at Cain. You go back there and read that. He wasn't chasing him around and thumping him over the head with a Bible or anything like that. Noah, remember Noah? What did he do? For 120 years he stood. No converts, just his family. I'm just so discouraged. I'm giving up. No, he stood. He said, well, well this is all that's gone. Eh, the Lord's going to close the door for us. Let's go. Amen. 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 You know what? That's you and I. We're just going to go and God's going to shut the door. Amen. And then, of course, Lot. Lot was in a 
Sodom and Gomorrah where all the kids are being transgendered and homoed. The sodomization of the children. And uh, he needed a little prodding. They had to actually grab, drag him out of there. But he went with his wife and his two daughters and everyone else destroyed. And even his wife looked back and was turned into a pillar of salt because mm -hmm. her heart was in Sodom. Moses, Moses stood and, uh, oh man, I mean, constantly hearing people gripe and complain and, right. why'd you bring us out here to just die, Moses? <laughs> Moses went to the Lord and said, Lord, I, did I conceive all these people? Do I have to be their daddy? That's where he went to the Lord. <laughs> but he stood, and uh, he didn't do it perfectly, but Moses is, uh, well, who doesn't know who Moses is? Amen? Amen? And there's many more. So if we're going to stand, we need a girdle. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> it's not what you're thinking. Read verse 14 again as we read. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Your loins girt about. Why does it say loins? Girt is where we get the word girdle. Now, little uh, Gloria, you know, she her little noises remind you of the babies. When I was a little boy, and I just talk, talk, certainly learned to talk, and I would say, uh, "See, see the girdle." I would say, "Girl," and I'd say, "See the girdle." A girdle isn't that. That's not what I'm talking about right there. Um, and if any of you are wearing those, we don't need to know. Amen. It's not just a belt, though. How many of you have kind of heard this teaching before and now show a belt? It's not just a belt. Um, the girdle is used as a convenient place for carrying different weapons. The sword, the dagger, and in modern times, the pistol are placed there. And they also protect... The loins. And to you men, that is very important. Amen? Amen? I'm just saying. There's what an ancient girdle would look like. Uh, the gird about, they would call it. Um, and the, the belt had a place where you could put things, including your sword. And then these things here, it's kind of like, what do they call it? Mail um, is what they, you, you see where over their chest. And sometimes they have a helmet on and have it around their neck and everything. But that was because the sword would hit that and not cut their <laughs> loins. Amen. Very important. And here's kind of what a modern, uh, a partial girt about. If you were to have a girt about yourself, it would be like that. And um, you see you have the gun, you have the ammo, you would have a knife. I think that might be a knife down there in the corner. But here's what it looks like being worn. You notice the protection. Nice little piece of Kevlar where it should be. Amen? Amen. 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 The reason why God the Holy Spirit said loins is not to embarrass you. <laughs> He's trying to tell you that just like your body has a soft spot, a soft target... Yeah. Your spirit has the same. Now, I don't know what that is for you, but I know what it is for me. There's, a, there's an area where you need to really cover up spiritually. Amen. It's just wise. You know, I've told people, we, people say, you know, you're anti-gay. We're not anti-gay. We go out and preach the gospel to the Sodomites. And I've had the uh, pleasure of seeing uh, at least uh, three that I know of that were saved. But you know what? They, the, two of the three went back and then came back. It went back and forth. And then one of them died uh, while they were still in, in, you know, falling back. And I don't know their heart, but I believe. I believe they're saved. I have to, you know, and if I find out different, then that's, that's the way it is. Do you know why the, the ones that fell back, and this is what you hear people say when they have experience of being able to lead a sodomite to the Lord. 
is that so many of them seem to go back and forth. There was one that uh, made a, you know, kind of made a ministry out of it. He worked for James Dobson, and he was a transvestite. He was a queen or whatever they call him, and, and he got saved and was going around preaching. And next thing you know, he went back, left his wife, went back to that for a year or two. Then he got right again and wept and cried, and his wife took him back. And it, it's so far so good, he's back again. You know why he fell? He, didn't, he wasn't girt about. And he went back around those people, back around those places, back around that whole culture, and it sucked him right in. And I've seen that in, the, in my own personal experience in dealing with them. I've also seen it with guys who have a problem, drunks. Guys who have a problem with drugs. There are guys in southern Ohio who got saved, and with a few weeks or months of being saved, they're right back on the dope. Why? They wouldn't protect themselves. You know what I did? I did what the old song says. Reading, riding, Route 23. <laughs> you ever heard that? That's a country song. Dwight Yoakam sang it. was a big hit. Well, but I'm talking about, I was from Southern Ohio, and I came straight up Route 23. Why? There were no jobs down there, and it got me away from those influences. And people just aren't willing to do that. And we are told to be girt about with truth. It's not just putting space between us, but when I moved, I got into the Word. Amen. I mean, I would go, I, I rented this place for a little while. It was a fellow who was going through a divorce, and he rented three of his bedrooms, this big house, and it's like a boarding room, I guess. But the, he let me have the basement. He said, you can just use this big room in the basement. And I'd go down there and I'd turn on Alexander, uh, Alexander Scorby and uh, Noah Hutchings, uh, you know, on Southwest Radio Church and J. Vernon McGee and these guys. And I'd listen all day long. I was either reading the Bible, listening to the Bible, listening to Bible teaching. And that went on for several months. I was not just putting space, but I was actually girding myself about with the truth. And that's why I tell people, there's no difference between me and those guys who got saved about the same time I did and they all fell right back into it. The only difference was I was willing to girt about with the truth. And there, you may be struggling today with a sin, but you're not willing to do what you know you need to do to put space between you and take extra effort to girt about with the truth. And that's how simple it is. It's between you and the Lord, but that's how simple it is. To start with, you can't stand with truth if you deny it exists. And that, uh, that's where we live today. Most of our friends and, and family, if they're honest, will tell you they don't believe truth exists. Uh, it's liberalism. See, people, people try to, again, in ignorance, they'll just say, it doesn't matter, conservative or liberalism. It does matter. Amen. The word conservatism means that you believe in with something. solid King James Bible preaching and teaching, along with the encouragement of the Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, tune in to our internet radio station available every day, 24 hours a day, at bbfohioradio.com. Join listeners from over 150 nations, all 50 U.S. states, and other U.S. territories who are tuning in and receiving free Bible teaching at bbfohioradio.com.